Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. Today, Dwayne Taves is joined by Eric Bumgardner with VML Advertising, talking about marketing beef to the generations. Then enjoy this week's Kansas soybean update. Next, Dwayne introduces us to Alyssa Harrison with National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Then it's this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update, and we'll end with Plain Talk with Kyle and Dwayne. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. Welcome to Farm Factor. First up today, Dwayne Taves is talking beef marketing with Eric Bumgardner with VML Advertising. Dwayne Taves joining you once again here on Ag AM in Kansas and a chance to catch up with Eric Baumgartner with uh, VLM Advertising. And Eric, uh, you have an opportunity to work uh, within the beef industry at times, particularly on uh, some of those research projects uh, to evaluate how is it that we meet uh, today's consumers' needs. And that's a pretty diverse market. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. And, you know, as we look at modern consumers today, they're using all sorts of different devices uh, to buy. And if you think about your mobile device, uh, iPads, you know, computers, all these different things, you're allowed to buy anything anywhere 24-7. So as we think about beef and think about how we're talking to consumers, we need to be where they are and uh, to give them access to the tools that they need to get our product faster, easier, and better. We think about uh, doing that. Uh, it is such a diverse marketplace and uh, evolving trends and changes within industries, but ultimately it appears that uh, uh, convenience, ease, and, uh, and a better understanding maybe of where that food came from is becoming a bigger part of it as well. Absolutely. And I think, you know, what's really uh, fascinating about that, you know, you talked about uh, ease and convenience as being definitely one of them, but it's also the research tools that are available to people. They're able to, you know, track exactly where, you know, their beef comes from, how it was braised, you know, produced, packaged, all those things. And, you know, 10 years ago, you couldn't do that. And now, you know, you, there's such a deluge of uh, information and data that really empowers consumers to get the absolute best products that they want for the best price. And so that's always going to be our challenge is how do we, you know, stay ahead of that? How do we use that, you know, uh, to our advantage? And what are some of the tools that um, will really, you know, help us propel the beef, you know, as the number one protein? From your work in, in that realm, uh, how do you see the industry performing at this point, and and how much ground do we need to make up? Well, I, I think we've made you know huge strides actually. Um, you know, I, I really credit the NCBA for, you know, being a very, you know, forward thinker when it comes to innovation and using technology. Um, I, of course, we've got, we'll always have a long way to go, but um, I think we're making great strides and, and catching up super fast. A lot of talk uh, about uh, millennials, uh, kind of almost, it seems, a catchphrase in everything we do as of late. Reality are, it uh, is maybe a, a, a big term, but not necessarily the most describing in terms of folks that just really are of a, a mindset of wanting to know more. Well, and I think, you know, we, we do talk about millennials quite a bit, but I, mean, I really think that the technology has really empowered virtually every audience from every gender and every race to be able to, you know, to get the information they need. Millennials just happen to be more native to it. Um, and the next generations, you know, I think about my 11 year old and it's funny that he thinks everything's a touch screen and he thinks everything's on demand. You know, he talks to the TV thinking it's gonna, you know, get him exactly what he wants because he was raised in it. You know, so when we think about that, you know, older generations are picking up and adapting to it because they're finding how useful it is. And millennials and, you know, earlier generations, even the centennials, I think is the newest generation now are are just native to it. But I think everyone is collectively accessing it. And uh, some are just more natural and others are, are learning it because it is so powerful and it does give them access to uh, areas of shopping that they just didn't have before. Our thanks to Eric Baumgartner joining us here on Ag AM in Kansas. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Folks, come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update.
Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. ValleyVet.com, ValleyVet.com, ValleyVet Supply. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kurt Marth is joining us and serves as chairman of the Kansas Soybean Commission. And Kurt, you just recently gave the Kansas Soybean Report for 2017 to the committee members on the Kansas House and Senate Agriculture Committees. All the commissions did just give their updates, and we had an excellent harvest this year. Our acres were up 27%, so we had 5.1 million acres of soybeans with about an average yield of 37 bushels an acre. So that means for our state, the value of that crop is estimated at $1.7 billion. We, as the commissioners, know that we have a huge job ahead of us to keep ahead of these big crops that we've been having. So some of the funding that we did, we specialized in soybean genetic, utilization, pest and disease, nutrition, weeds and management systems. We also have ongoing projects in agronomy, plant pathology, etymology, and grain science at Kansas State and biodiesel at University of Kansas, and new uses at Pittsburgh State University. We have to keep our exports really flowing good. So we do work with IGP at K-State, United Soybean Export Council on a WISH, which is World Initiative for Soy and Human Health, and China is still our biggest customer. We sponsor K-State Summer Soybean Science Institute and the Kansas Foundation of Agri- in the classroom. We also reimburse junior high and senior high science teachers that use soy, meat, dairy, and poultry products in their classroom. We are doing things to promote soy foods and industrial uses like the soy-based inks, adhesives, paints, stains, sealers, and insulations. And, but our biggest success is in biodiesel. Last year, we um, 2.8 billion gallons of biodiesel was developed in the United States states and kansas we are really unique in that we have a biodiesel consortium of the four academic institutes in the state of k-state and ku and beloit community and community college down in liberal that they're all working together to educate their students on biodiesel we wouldn't be doing our job if we left out the livestock industry in this country almost all of the soybean meal in kansas is used by the livestock in poultry animals in this country. We work with the Kansas Pork Association and we've taken these informational bloggers to farms across the state to continue the education about the importance of our agriculture in this state. We discuss everything from GMOs to antibiotics, hormones, pesticides, and any question they have, we will make sure we answer it for them. That's Kurt Marth, a Logan County producer, serves as chairman of the Kansas Soybean Commission. He joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more with Dwayne Taves and Alyssa Harrison as they talk beef. It's what's for dinner. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy. What does a brighter, more sustainable future look like in our cities and towns? And how do we get there? When New York needed an alternative fuel source to reduce carbon emissions, the city found what it needed in biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. 
Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection where we feature my renowned artwork, frontier military, and Native American artifacts. In the painting behind me is Scouting the Trail. Two scouts overlook the Smoky Hill River Valley just north of the famous Monument Rocks which are internationally renowned as a column of 7th Cavalry parade north of the river. On this point, two scouts rode in a circle and there were 18 cartridges found up there and that meant that they usually were warning of impending danger and firing off their weapons. One of those weapons I feature in the gallery, a Spencer weapon, which we featured in the painting. Very unique and very honored to showcase this to you. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now let's talk beef as Dwayne visits with Alyssa Harrison, Senior Vice President of Global Marketing for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Dwayne Thames joining you once again here on Ag AM in Kansas and a chance to catch up with Elisa Harrison with NCBA and uh, Global Marketing. And uh, Lisa, we talk about uh, the image of beef a lot of times with producers and what we're trying to convey to consumers is uh, not always the easiest task, but we continue to make strides in that direction. Yeah, we're, um, it, it's a, a continual challenge with today's consumers. And so as we stepped back this year and, and looked at how we can make the biggest impact in the marketplace, we started looking at what all of our assets were um, and looked at the brand equity that we have in Beef is What's for Dinner, uh, which turns 25 this year. And we were very pleased to find that it has strong equity, that people still remember it, they have fond memories of it, um, but more importantly, it inspires them to eat beef. Even those millennials. Uh, today remember it. it it brings up memories of their mom's kitchen and for those who don't remember it when they hear it it still inspires them to eat beef so we wanted to make it relevant for today's consumers and to do that we needed to um, uh, really uh, create the brand as being something that's transparent um, that pr that promotes the people who produce the product as well as the attributes of the nutritional attributes of the product itself and of course the taste I mean beef you know beats everyone on taste uh, all the other protein choices and when we look at it, there's more choices of protein today. Protein is the big, you know, word today. Um, and we needed to make sure that we, uh, that uh, our claim as the top protein, uh, you know, that we remain that. And so in order to do that, we had to sort of refresh our, our brand, refresh the image, use all of the assets with the brand, the people behind it, the taste uh, of beef, which really kind of makes us unique and separates us from the other proteins. So we've launched a, a brand new website, a digital platform that brings in the information of eight different platform eight different websites that has everything that the consumer or nutritionists or doctors would need to know today about beef including those people who are producing it and for the first time the beef promotion uh, program includes a very big emphasis on uh, the producers. And so we released a, a, an advertisement uh, that really showcases uh, p producers across the country and all segments of the industry about how beef is produced. Um, and then also you can go to the website and find out you know, shorter, more deeper dive um, videos about um, how beef is produced. And it's going uh, over very, very well. Uh, so far, you know, we expect this last quarter of the year to have reached uh, 20 million consumers with this new brand and our goal is to reach 20 million consumers every quarter with new messages, um, uh, more edgy advertising that really puts the product as the star, the producer as the star, and the taste and so, so far uh, it seems to be working for us. We think about uh, information really being a king, if you will, whether that be information in the past about nutritional qualities, uh, but you referenced uh, more information about producers and, and how that product is getting to their table. Right. Um, you know, consumers today want to know uh, everything about everything they buy. It's not just beef. It's the, whether it's cars, socks, you know, 
what, whatever. And so, uh, which is good news for us because we have a fantastic story to tell about this, uh, the way we, we raise beef in a sustainable manner, um, uh, how we take care of our animals, how we ensure that it's the safest product in the world. So that, that's a story that we've always been trying to tell for the last 25 years. Um, but what we need to do is make it a two-way conversation now. Um, the consumer wants, don't just talk at them, you have to talk with them. And that's what some of the digital platforms allow us to do, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, allows us to um, answer their questions, um, be a little bit um, edgier, um, but you know, which we have to be because there's a lot of people out there trying to promote a lot of food products, and so we have to be able to bust through that clutter. And we think that we've we've kind of hit uh, a really good strategy by relaunching the brand, um, making it more relevant to today's consumers. Well, certainly, beef it is. What's for dinner? Our thanks to Elisa for joining us from NCBA on Ag AM in Kansas. Uh, Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. This segment brought to you by the Arab Shrine Circus, coming to the Kansas Expo Center February 15th through the 18th. For ticket information, visit ArabShrineCircus.com. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, it's Shrine Circus time! Enjoy a weekend of thrills, chills, and tons of fun at the Kansas Expo Center February 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. See lions and tigers, elephants, high-flying trapeze artists, and watch a man shot out of a cannon. And Johnny Rocket, everyone's favorite, is back! For more information, visit ArabShrineCircus.com and be sure to thank our corporate sponsor, Security Benefit. The Arab Shrine Circus, don't you dare miss it! Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business that started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer it and work with you. Hi, I'm Randy. And I'm Paul from PFI. We would like to personally invite you to stop by PFI, home of Boot Daddies. PFI is America's Western store, covering over 50,000 square feet. Over 25,000 boots. Visit Saddle City with the largest selection of saddles and tack anywhere. A huge selection of hats at Big Spur Hat Company in PFI Town. And choose from the best brands of clothing and accessories for the entire family. PFI, located on Highway 65 at the Battlefield exit in Springfield. And I'm not kidding. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau update. The sixth round of North American Free Trade Agreement talks are underway in Canada, and the American Farm Bureau Federation is looking to the talks as a way to modernize the agreement and improve on gains for U.S. ag. AFBF Senior Director of Congressional Relations Dave Salmonson says top trade officials are attending the talks this week and could tackle hard issues, including agriculture how to deal with the high dairy tariffs in Canada, deal with some of the food safety standards issues that they're continuing to work on. We hope for improvements and approvals for biotechnology. So there's many issues to help modernize NAFTA. But as we've been saying, NAFTA has been very good for U.S. agriculture, for Canadian agriculture, for Mexican agriculture, strong trade growth throughout the 23 years of the agreement, and we want that to continue. Salmonson is confident that trade negotiators will address issues important to agriculture. Our trade negotiators are well-versed have been talked with Farm Bureau, other agricultural organizations continuously the past year about these issues, know what U.S. agriculture needs out of this agreement, understand what needs to be protected, what can be helped. And I think all three negotiating countries and negotiating teams have a strong appreciation for agriculture. Agriculture is such a big industry in all the countries. NAFTA negotiation rounds are scheduled through the spring. 
You can never predict when things are going to get wrapped up. The big issue in this whole negotiation has been about auto parts, rules of origin, manufacturing. I think if those issues could be dealt with, then I think the rest of the agreement could rapidly come to a close. Michael Clements, Washington. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Play Talk. Trust and leadership are critical to success at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center in Manhattan. Just ask Coach Bill Snyder. People of the Regenerative Center do care about others. I've been highly impressed with those people that have that vested interest and try to help people become better. The center really is a a wonderful thing here in Manhattan, first of its kind. We're on the cutting edge of what lies ahead. Find out more about the trusted leader in stem cell therapy at KansasRMC.com. Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. BootDaddy.com proudly supports Equifest of Kansas, Kansas's premier all-breed horse fair and exposition presented by the Kansas Horse Council. Equifest of Kansas brings the nation's leading equine clinicians and entertainers to the Topeka Expo Center. Enjoy three full days of education, entertainment, and shopping, including the Jumper Classic, Breed Exhibition, Top Horse Versatility Competition, Ranch Rodeo, and more. It's an event for the whole family. For more information or to buy tickets, visit EquifestofKS.com. Welcome to Our Bar B, 8,000 plus square feet Western store with something for everyone in the family. We have boots, belts, hats, jeans, anything you could want to outfit you and your horse. Come visit our line of saddles. We have 400 plus new and used saddles in stock. We offer tack, grooming supplies, head stalls, breast collars, you name it, we've got it for you and your horse. That's Our Bar B, one mile east of Highway 4 on Northeast 39th. Our Bar B, where Western is a way of life. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Dwayne are up to on Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk with the purple, blue... Yeah, don't try and evaluate. That With a shirt that's a lot of little things <laughs> on it. Either that or I'm having a stroke. It's perfectly designed. You can't tell if it's wrinkled or not. Well, I'd say that's That right. is the key to having a good quality made shirt. See, my shirt, on the other hand... I could go clean the car when you're done. I think it it's a chamois. Like chamois. I think somebody sewed up a chamois. Speaking and put some of cars, on. your okay. fact or fiction question of the day: Al Capone's business card uh-huh. listed him as a used car salesman. Fact or fiction? Now, I think it lists him as a furniture salesman. I think it's no. It's not car though. It's not car. You're correct. It is false. He was and a it, furniture dealer. Furniture dealer. Okay. Dealing furniture. Yeah. Well, there might have been some of that. And see, he ended up going to prison for tax fraud, right. not for any of the other things, things that, that he was probably most famous figured for. Figured he probably did. Right. Yeah, never to be proven that he actually did. Um, so I would say my point is, is I, I, I was about to say that the furniture business might be a good money laundering business. <laughs> oh. But he didn't know how to launder bi- money in those days because the income tax was too new. And, and he didn't know how to launder money. Thus, he got caught. Yeah. So, that hard life of crime. Isn't that interesting, though? In La- Lonnie Mon- money laundering, Lonnie Mundering. <laughs> it's easy for you to say. Exactly. Um, people are trying to look for ways they can pay tax. Ah. Isn't that odd? Compared yeah. to tax evasion. <laughs> yeah. Pay a little tax so they can circulate that you know, money legally. You then? know what? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, you know what the difference between tax evasion and tax minimization is? You go to prison for tax evasion. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. The others, okay. The others, they're, it's It's, it's, it's all American. depending on what it's my all, accountant Ameri- told me I could it's do. It's American to pay the fewest amount of taxes that you possibly legally have to. Well, I'd like to bring that up since okay. you did. There's since a lot of people that talk about some business people's practices of utilizing the tax code to their advantage. Okay, some would call that a loophole. Correct. Okay. I I think people need to understand that that is only available to them because someone else in the position to do so made that loophole available to them. And and actually most of those loopholes are tax incentives. Right. They're there for a reason. For instance, not very long ago the economy was floundering and they made it so if you built a farm building, let's say a machinery shed, sure. in the past you had to de- depreciate that over 39 years. Uh. Well, for a year or two in there, they said, if you'll build one of those, 
we'll let you depreciate it all in one year. Huh? Well, they did that out of the goodness of their heart. No, no. they didn't. They tried they to wanted spur to, economic activity. They wanted you to put people to work that were building buildings. And yeah. so, and sure enough, that tax incentive worked really well. That tax incentive, some people would call a loophole. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.